here I am on my property. Or it's actually not in my name yet, but it's on the way. I just dug this hole. I'm testing. I wanted to see like how moist things are. Now, maybe this is the wrong time of the year to check moistness. But I'm going to show you something. If I take this soil, and I squeeze it, it holds its shape somewhat. If you turn it around, it'll just keep falling apart. Now, I squeezed on that really hard. See, watch. Just barely have to move it and then see it just... So, I don't know what kind of soil you would call this. That doesn't really seem to be sand to me, but maybe it is. Maybe it's... Uh sandy loam with a little bit of clay but not a whole lot of clay if there's not a lot of clay then it kind of means in my opinion it means that the, the rainfall will sink into the ground here somewhat quickly oh actually it's got some clay on it because i'm having to really rub hard to get the, my fingertips Clean. Well, there's some clay in there. So the clay would be what is retaining the water. So this is where we are here. There's my car over there. Those power poles over there, that's Belmont Trail. It's a paved road. I can come on a paved road all the way up to my road, and then I only have to go 330 plus a few extra feet to get to my property. And you'll see I got, um, there's power lines over there. So this is a pretty good property. Uh, the soil quality, I think, is pretty damn good. I think what we're dealing with here is, um, is uh, aridness is why there's only grass here but I did wind up collecting some of this dirt and I'm gonna take it home with me take a big bag I'm gonna take it home with me and see if I can grow any other plants with it like put it in the in a pot I think I have enough there for a test for a good test I might fill up two small pots and then I'm going to grow some things from seed because that's really the best way to tell if it's what the fertility level of the soil is. If it's a good soil, I might keep this property. If it grows things easily, like other things other than grass and wildflowers and I think this is, what do you call that? That's that That stuff that gets the little little things that go in your bicycle tires when you I forget what they call them goat's head or something like that or I think it's called goat head or something like that. There's a bunch of that here. Grass. There's several different kinds of grasses. I don't know what else you would call this stuff. There's a little bit of wildflowers going on. You can see some white flower going on right there, right there. They haven't yet come up because I think maybe it's been like freezing at night or something. I'm not sure. But you can see off in the distance over there all the wildflowers on the mountains. At least I can. Let me uh, see if I can increase your view here. You can see, there you go. See all the yellow up there? Now, I don't think this is a super bloom year. I think this is kind of a normal year in terms of the wildflowers. So, 
I bought this property, or if I bought it, I did buy it. If I keep this property and develop it, I'm look, thinking to myself, you know, where am I going to get good hiking in? And I guess I could hop a fence and go up there. I could go up there too, but I'd have to hop a fence for that. I don't think anybody would mind out here though. There's just no trees. Well, there's trees in this neighborhood, but there's no trees up in the mountains. It's all just bush. I guess there's a few trees up there, but not very many. Besides, I don't think I should go on that one. That that place there, I think, is, is a, a working ranch over there. Uh, nice thing about this property is you can get ranch Wi-Fi, which is, comes from that direction over there. Got electricity. I think the soil is good. We'll find out. We'll find out. But on top of all that, from here you can see Mount Abel. And, uh, and there's snow on it right now. So... That's kind of nice. Maybe, um, you know, I want to have a house with southern exposure. Um, I want it to follow east-west. Like that. And, um, and so I want the winter sun to come into the house at the lower angle and warm the inside of the house. So I would probably have my house closer to this edge of the property than that edge of the property. And the reason why is because if I put it over here, then I can control what's in front of it for 330 feet. That give me an opportunity to make sure that there's no uh, shade coming in in the winter time. But uh, I do plan on putting a row of shade trees through here from that fence line to over there. And um, that's why I'm dug a hole over near here is because I wanted to see, because these would be the first trees I would plant is uh, along this edge here. And I would, I would not plant them on the property line. I would move them back at least like maybe 30 or 40 feet. That way, um, the neighboring property will not be uh, deciding to put their house right up on the fence to get the shade. you got to think about these things in advance. If you come out all the way out here, I wouldn't want to have somebody really, really close to me, you know? You know what I'm saying? I mean, you come out here, these are all... You know, larger size properties are two and a half acre minimum. So, you know, it's nice to have the space, nice to have the separation. <clears throat> At least I would, I think that that would be that. You can see from here that Belmont here, that drive over here. It goes all the way up to the other side of California Valley. Let me make this big. Can you see it? Like just above my car, that line going through the, the valley? That's Belmont. That's, the, that's one of the two roads that goes east-west from one side of California Valley all the way over to the other side. And the other one is on the, is, um, is way uh, over there. It's a mile from here, a mile from here. And it's called Arrow Bear. And that runs also completely east to west. So these two properties and they're one mile apart from each other. They, um, They, uh, they run east-west the whole way. There's very few roads that go north-south through the whole California Valley. There's Soda Lake Road, which runs at an angle, at a, like a
like a triangle shape. And then Seven Mile Road, which is all another um, triangle, or you know, it's an angular road. It's not, it's not run. It doesn't run um, north, south, east, west. It runs at an angle. And those two roads, they're pretty much take most people through north and south of California Valley, other than these other small little feeder roads. So, all right, well, that's it for now. Um, I don't think anybody will be viewing this video, but in case you are, I hope you enjoyed it, and have a nice day.